I'm going to talk a little bit about the National Integrated Drought Information System, or NIDIS, um, so that you are a little bit more familiar with NIDIS and the work that we do, as well as thinking about how NIDIS can support this really important work that you're doing in Utah. How can we best support your work, and how can you think about this work within a broader context of the work that NIDIS is doing? So, just a little bit about NIDIS. Uh, we were established by law in 2006 and with the mandate to develop and provide a national drought early warning system in order to better inform and provide for more timely decision making to reduce drought related impacts and costs. I underline those sections because I wanted to highlight that we're not just doing a bunch of research. The, the whole point of everything that NIDIS is doing is to focus on the goal of reducing drought-related impacts and costs. I think that also gives us a very broad mandate to do a lot of different activities that best meet your needs. So we're not stuck in one, doing one particular thing. It's very broad, and that's why I want to hear from you what you need from us. So the way that NIDAS has interpreted this law is by establishing nine regional drought early warning systems. We have four regional coordinators. We're hiring two more right now. Um, I am the regional coordinator for the Intermountain West and the Southern Plains drought early warning systems. Seth showed this map yesterday of the Intermountain West drought early warning system of which Utah is part. And, um, and you can see it includes um, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. And that was one of the reasons that we brought the drought coordinators from those states here to participate in this meeting so that we can think about drought within this broader context and think about drought early warning systems within this larger region. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the components of drought early warning systems. These are components that they, they were not just made up by me. Um, they are common components of early warning systems across all hazards, including like famine early warning systems. The first component is observations and monitoring. So. Um, Dave Simmerall showed you uh, information about the U.S. Drought Monitor yesterday, and that is one aspect of monitoring of drought. So that fits within that bubble of observations and monitoring. Another one is predictions and forecasting. How are we forecasting drought? How are we ahead of drought in terms of understanding when it's coming? Of course, somebody said to me recently that um, drought early warning is actually just a little bit less late. So we're not too good at real advanced forecasting. But the seasonal to subseasonal forecasting fits into this bubble. That we had that conversation yesterday about getting a little bit ahead, more ahead of seasonal to subseasonal forecasting. Education and public awareness is really important. I think that's come up a lot in our discussions, uh, communicating with the public, as well as educating ourselves and others about what is drought, what is the drought footprint, what are the economic impacts of drought, how does this affect the most vulnerable in our populations. So that's within that bubble. Planning and preparedness, that's what we're all about at this meeting and interdisciplinary research and applications. And I'm gonna show you some examples of the type of research and applications and other aspects of drought early warning systems that NIDAS has been investing in. Um, but first I'm gonna tell you about NIDAS support to the overall drought, inf uh, drought early warning systems. So NIDAS supports uh, stakeholder engagement and training workshops like this, bringing folks together to share information, to share their knowledge, um, to train on what are new tools in observations and monitoring and predictions and forecasting, that type of um, uh, training and stakeholder engagement. We work a lot on adapting and transferring best practices and learning. For example, uh, the sharing from New Mexico and Arizona and Colorado in these workshops. How can we learn from what others are doing so that we're improving what we're doing um, everywhere across the US? NIDIS also has a mandate of uh, federal agency coordination. Part of the public law says NIDAS shall coordinate and integrate as practicable federal research in support of a drought early warning system. And you can see in these bubbles the federal agencies that NIDAS uh, works very closely with, like USDA, EPA, NASA. All of these federal agencies sit on NIDAS's executive council and we collaborate very closely with them. 
Another aspect of NIDA support is um, support for operational climate and drought science. And this is where I'm going to give you some examples. Um, it, Seth showed this yesterday, Western Water Assessment's work. Western Water Assessment is one of the NOAA RESA teams, and NIDAS provides support to quite a, uh, quite a few of the RESA teams, including um, some of Western Water Assessment's fantastic work. This is a, an example of their website that shows the Intermountain West Climate Dashboard with lots of great data and information and tools. I encourage you to check it out because it's got a lot of really good information um, uh, that might, you might find useful for monitoring drought and drought forecasting and drought impacts for Utah. And also their website shows a lot of the information on their current research projects. Seth talked about the, some of those projects yesterday, so I'm not going to go into great detail. Another example of uh, NIDAS support, uh, Cody talked about yesterday some of NIDAS's support for the National Drought Mitigation Center, including support to produce the U.S. Drought Monitor, the Drought Impact Reporter, and the North American Drought Monitor. Also, uh, NIDAS provides support to the Colorado Climate Center, which produces weekly Intermountain West Drought Early Warning System um, products and information. I would encourage you also to look at their website because the, it's a tremendous amount of information that's available for the entire region, including Utah. It includes precipitation, snowpack, stream, flag, stream flow, surface water, uh, evaporative demand, uh, drought impact reports, drought outlook, there's a, a huge amount of information there, and they produce this, um, this report weekly. So it's really good, up-to-date information. Another aspect that NIDAS uh, funds is assessment work. For example, the assessment of the 2017 Northern Plains drought. Um, and the goals of the drought are to better, uh, sorry, the goals of the assessment are to better understand flash droughts. This was a flash drought you can see in this map very quickly between May and September. We went from no drought to exceptional drought in the region. So the assessment is really trying to understand what are the causes of flash drought? What are the physical drivers of flash drought? How does this particular flash drought compare to other ones? With the ultimate goal of understanding how flash droughts contribute to wildfire and what can we learn across the drought early warning systems? What can we learn in other areas so that we're better prepared and understanding flash droughts better? Um, as most of NIDAS's work, this is done in partnership uh, with other organizations and entities, including the Canadian and U.S. federal, state, local, and tribal entities. Another area that NIDAS is investing, as I said, is understanding better the science of drought and uh, drought, better drought prediction and forecasting. This is a new tool that NIDAS has been investing in called the Evaporative Demand Drought Index. Um, it's an experimental drought monitoring and early warning guidance tool that's basically measuring what's the evaporative demand or the thirst of the atmosphere. It seems to be a better, um, a little bit of a better tool for understanding flash droughts than, say, the U.S. Drought Monitor. So it's one tool you might look at as a, in a range of tools when you're thinking about monitoring drought and understanding um, if there is a flash drought coming. So that's another, uh, another uh, tool that NIDAS has been investing in. Another interesting one is Climate Engine. This is a free web-based application powered by Google Earth. It's using a variety of geospatial data sets that track uh, vegetation, snow, water um, across the planet. And also it integrates climate data sets that track temperature, precipitation, winds, etc. It's a, a, on using Climate Engine, you can visualize uh, the Evaporative Demand Drought Index, the one that I just showed, as well as SPEI, SPI, and Snowtown. This is also done in partnership with a range of organizations, including Western Regional Climate Center and Google Earth. And this just gives you a, a sense of what it looks like. I would encourage you to, to go onto climateengine.org and take a look at it. It's a pretty cool new tool. So uh, NIDAS has a website, uh, drought.gov. It's the U.S. drought portal. I have to tell you, I think it's terrible. Um, <laughs> I, I am constantly, I know something is in there, and I'm looking for it, and I can't find it, and I've used it before, and I know it's there. Um, but we are in the process of uh, completely revamping the website. 
So this is the page for the Intermountain West Drought Early Warning System. And this is one of the things I hate about it because as you can see, maybe a little bit up here, are in teeny tiny lettering, because we don't really want you to find this information, is uh, <laughs> current conditions and water supply, drought impacts, drought forecasts, reports, assessments, and outlooks, and partners and stakeholders. There is a lot of information in there, but good luck finding it. Um, <laughs> we also have on the drought portal a number of drought information products that you might find useful. For example, with the um, with the terrible drought in the Southwest, we've been doing monthly drought webinars. Those webinar recordings are on drought.gov. In addition, you are welcome to join any of these webinars. Give me your contact information. I'll put it in our con constant contact and you'll get in, um, invitations to join the monthly webinars. They typically include um, an update on current conditions, impacts of the drought, as well as forecasts for the next month or two or the season. After the drought webinars, we produce the, the product on the right, which is the drought status update. You can also access those on drought.gov or contact me, I'm happy to send them out to you. Um, I'll, I'll just also say that uh, we are, since we are redoing the website, I would love to hear your feedback on what you want on that website because I want it to be useful to you. Uh, I don't care if it's useful to me. It needs to be usable, useful, actionable information for you. So please let me know. Take a look at what's on there. Let me know what you want to see. If it's not working for you, the structure, any sort of feedback, I, I definitely welcome on drought.gov. So just going back briefly to what I was talking about earlier, the drought early warning system and the components of drought early warning system, I wanted to talk about how it is not, it's not something that NIDIS owns. We all own the drought early warning system. It is a network of all of our efforts put together from local to state to regional to national. It isn't owned or pushed forward by one entity. And that's because the needs in, in, in relation to drought are vast. Drought covers large geographic areas. It has a large footprint. It lasts for a long time. It affects communities. It affects the nation. It affects our economy, multiple sectors. There's no one organization or agency that can possibly address all the needs associated with drought. There's no one agency that can possibly do all these components of a drought early warning system. So we have to knit all these pieces together by collaborating together um, and putting together all those various components of which different agencies do different, different pieces of. So when we're knit together, we can jointly define what are our objectives with a drought early warning system. And once we define those objectives, we can align the science, the training, the information sharing, um, the planning and preparedness, we can all align together towards those objectives. We can coordinate better to reduce redundancies, to be more efficient in our work, and we can support learning and replication and scaling across the region and nationally. So that's the concept of a drought early warning system. So this is my ask of you. I want to understand how NIDIS and how I specifically can support you most effectively in Utah as well as regionally. And I would ask you to think about your work within the regional drought early warning system. Just as Enov and Molly and Taryn came from other states to contribute to your understanding of what they're doing, I would ask that you do the same. When there's opportunities to share what you've learned, when there's opportunities to contribute your knowledge to a broader system, I would ask that you do that so that the regional drought early warning system continues to um, strengthen and improve. Then I mentioned this earlier, drought.gov is terrible right now. So I'd love your feedback on ideas so that we can improve it and make it um, meet your needs. 
And then finally, as I mentioned, I have a stakeholder list for Intermountain West if you would like updates and information about webinars that we're holding or uh, drought status updates. You won't get a ton of information from us, usually a monthly, um, a monthly e email with some information about what we're doing and how you might join. So please give me your, in your details, your contact information if you want to be added to the stakeholder list. And that's it, thank you very much. I look forward to working with you.